Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I've got a really great one. This is with Fernando Gonzalez from 250 Barbecue in Riverdale, Maryland. It's about 10, 15 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. He also has a location in Union Market in D.C., a food stall with a limited menu, not as much as he has at the Riverdale location. This one's great because it shows how Central Texas Barbecue has really expanded its reach beyond the United States because he's from El Salvador, San Salvador, the capital. And for business, he started traveling to Central Texas and got a taste of all the great barbecue joints and wanted to bring it back to San Salvador. He had family in the United States and then he talks about how they open up the barbecue spot there and the location sounds amazing. And they have one primitive pit right now, a thousand gallon. They have another 500 gallon from Meadow Creek and he's gonna get another thousand gallon primitive pit. And they open right in the heart of the pandemic. So he talks about that, but it's really interesting to learn a lot about what it's like opening a barbecue spot in San Salvador and dealing with the health department, just like they have to deal with the health department here and the nuances that are involved in dealing with the U.S. Embassy and feeding them the expats that were at the embassy. It's a really great story, but above all, from Wednesday through Sunday in Riverdale, you can get amazing Central Texas style barbecue. He does inject his heritage in the sides, him and his wife. His wife is a big part of this. One quote that did stick out was that they call themselves a Central Texas style barbecue joint with a hint of the tropics. So make sure you do follow them. At, they're at two, the number two, 50 BBQ on all the social media, as well as 250BBQ.com. So when you're in the DC area, make sure you do visit them. And I, I know that he would appreciate it because he's really, really trying hard to put out great quality food every single day, as well as they have some of that grab and go um, stuff in their cold case so you can get some brisket, pulled pork, ribs, etc. So that way, if you're traveling somewhere, just pop in, grab some stuff, head on out. So I can't thank Fernando enough for sharing this story. I know you're going to enjoy this. And the Kevin's BBQ Joints podcast and YouTube show is brought to you by Flores Tortillas. Check them out at florestortillas.com every Monday, as I say, at 10 a.m. Texas time. They go on sale. They sell out really quickly. They're made with smoked beef tallow. They're amazing. Make yourself happy. Make a friend happy. Make a relative happy. They're also available in a number of barbecue spots. They use them in their tacos, and a lot of them sell dozens of tortillas and cold cases. Again, that's Flores Tortillas. And I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. Links to all the podcasts and YouTube stuff, as well as all this other stuff. I'm trying to do a number of posts every day. But at the end, stay safe. Thank you guys so much for listening. Good morning, Fernando. How are you? Thank you, sir. I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing pretty good. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you because, as I mentioned off air, you have a very unique story. You didn't grow up in Texas or in in the United States. <laughs> you grew up in El, Sa El Salvador, correct? That is correct. El Salvador, San Salvador, Central America. Okay. And then, oh, so is El Salvador and San Salvador? Is that San Salvador is the capital. Okay. You know, that's so sad, like that we... <laughs> I should know this, and I've, I've known some people from El Salvador, and I should know the capital. So that you live in San Salvador, and did you have a, did you grow up with a tradition of cooking, and were you cooking in your family, or were you out Not cooking? really, not really. Um, uh, my academic training is actually a civil engineering. Oh, wow. And my wife, she has a lot of experience in the restaurant industry. She's a third-generation restaurant owner. Oh, that became handy when, for sure, when, for sure, when yeah. we were trying to open a restaurant. <laughs> no, she's, she's been great. Uh, she's been a great support uh, through this journey. We had a small shipping company in Central America. Yeah, I was going to so say, we, like, how did you go from civil engineering to shipping out of that? Yeah, I mean, uh, growing up in El Salvador, you have very limited opportunities. So, you know, you 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 are in the constant pursuit of your path of life and you want to supply for your family and cover, yeah. you know, your basic needs. And at a certain time and point in, in, in life, you start wondering, is this working or not in this country? You know, yeah. it, and, and, and it's, it's a sad story and it's also a great story. We decided to entrepreneur this small shipping company traveling from Central America to different cities here in the US. And we were traveling to the metropolitan DC area where you can find a lot of, uh, a lot of Salvadoran uh, population. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we were traveling different, different cities, New York, Los Angeles, and of course, Texas. You have a lot of uh, Salvadorans in Dallas and Houston, 
uh, not that many in, in Central Texas, but I received an order for a large car parts shipment coming from Dallas to Austin and then from Austin to San Salvador. So were you shipping, and, were you, were you shipping yeah. anything specific or were you just like a freight forwarder kind of, or like a No, shipper? I was shipping all kinds of things. Okay. Except for the, you know, for the illegal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Above board. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, disclaimer. People in El Salvador call it encomiendas. There are small packages, small shipments. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're shipping something from El Salvador to, to, to the U.S., uh, food that people miss is here. Um, things that people miss is here. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's like a small FedEx uh, freight cargo. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. And, and I, I dealt in, yeah. the, in my past life with my father when he was alive. We sold furniture to hotels and things. And so we dealt with a right. lot of different shipping companies outside the United States, with China, with uh, all over. Yes. And so it was definitely, it's interesting how there's that niche that people might probably would never know about. Yeah. There's a large niche to it because because uh, during the civil war in, in El Salvador, as you probably know, that lasted for more than a decade. Yeah. So you had a long uh, immigration wave coming from Central America in general to the United States, and you know that population now misses a lot of stuff from from their their country of birth, and that's we we're, were changing a lot of a lot of different things, uh, traveling, shipping, um, helping people to. And I received this order for a large car, car parts from Austin to, to San Salvador. And it required for me to stay there a few days in Central Texas. Okay. And I just Googled what to do in Austin, Texas, what to do in Central Texas. And of course, a lot of different barbecue tours appeared on top of the list. Uh-huh. And that was like it just, it was the beginning of a, of a great <laughs> I went to Salt Lake, I went to La Barbecue, I went to Terry Black's Barbecue, I went to Lockhart, I went to Taylor, and of course I went to Austin, I went to uh, Leroy and Lewis, and of course I did the line at Franklin's Barbecue. Yeah. And it, I, I, I had an epiphany right there. You know, because this that's, that's because what, and like, what would barbecue be in San Salvador? Pretty much in existence. Well, they, pretty much. They, there's, there's live fire cooking right when there be exactly open so we call barbacoa really live fire grilling you know cooking over cold bed or live fire grilling in general but we don't have a smoking meat tradition at all kind of like we here in los angeles too <laughs> we did with this we i know have that, i yeah. know so it was more and, just and direct yeah exactly so I was traveling back and forth to Texas, and whenever I was back in El Salvador, I was like, "Hey, man, I, I really wish my family and friends could taste what I'm tasting in wow. Texas." So I decided to buy a 250 gallon propane tank and build my own smoker. Nice. And also, yes, didn't you buy? Did you buy Franklin's book too? Oh, of course, of course, yes. I, I, I had a few chats with him. Uh, this was back into 20. Let me see. 2017. Oh wow. Okay. And and I was I think lucky enough to find Aaron Franklin uh, working at his pits for a few for a few times, and he's a very accessible guy. And he was like, uh, "Where you come from? Where you live? You know, what type of woods do you have?" He signed my book and and That's put amazing. something like "Giddy up," you know. <clears throat> so like you get on it <laughs> exactly and i i think that's I'm nice to, to share the same story with other pit masters now mm-hmm. well so, yeah no, and that's yeah. it's a it's a similar thing but i've never heard that necessarily i think i maybe i've heard from someone in the united kingdom that had done that maybe somewhere in australia but that's yes a, yes that's and that must yeah. have reinforced it in your mind that it's it's doable <clears throat> absolutely absolutely and i mean their story in general is so inspiring I was reading his book in my in a digital version in my in my flight, and uh, next time I, I I I went there, I asked him, "Man, what are you sharing all these secrets on your book?" And he was like, "You're right. It's pretty much all in there." And I was completely hooked, not because of the food only. Of course, you have amazing barbecue in Texas, but the whole culture around barbecue oh, there, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the life of a pit master, the hospitality. The whole culture around barbecue really hooked me, really mm-hmm. hooked me. Yeah. 
And then, so when you got that 250 gallon <clears throat> propane tank, did you weld it yourself or did you get a friend? I, th- I think I might've read that you had a, a yes, some, yes. I had this friend uh, from Costa Rica who was living in Salvador at that time. He still lives in El Salvador and he's a professional welder. And I said, hey, I have this uh, rough idea of how to build your own smoker. And I have a few pictures from this book, you know, a few designs. Uh, are, you, are you available? And he said, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was as crazy as me, you know, cutting, welding, um, sticking things together, trying an error in our backyard. And uh, one day was ready to, to be seasoned. We started, uh, we started a fire. And of course, we don't have like the proper seasoned wood in Salvador. You have tropical woods. We were experiencing with a lot of stuff. Okay. Mango, sapote, uh, orange wood, whatever thing we could find in the surroundings. That's interesting too, because I think a lot of people probably wouldn't realize that. I guess because yeah, because oak, oak <laughs> in general, mesquite, those are things. Those things are more prevalent here in the United States. Exactly, uh, cedar wood. I even mentioned this to Aaron Flanken one time, and, and he said, "Cedar wood, that's very interesting." <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing, man? Um, I was using all sorts of things, but I was, I was, I was learning, and mm-hmm. I'm still learning. And I was developing kind of my own approach to barbecue. And I think that's very unique to each individual pit master out there. Were you able to get the proper, would you able to get a brisket? That's a very good question. Um, I was able to order a few choice cuts from the U.S., import from the U.S. But that was not until probably six months into the journey. Uh, before that, it was it was all about ribs and 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 pork shoulder. Okay, that makes which sense. I was able to get from a, a membership store in San Salvador, and I was experimenting. I was trying. I was uh, learning. Of, and 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 of course, watching all these videos and reading reading a lot and trying to exchange information. I think uh, rice barbecue in Los Angeles was a great mm-hmm. inspiration too. He helped me a lot too. Well, he's from El Salvador, yeah. It's he's from the Salvador, exactly. And and you need to consider too, there was a language barrier. You know, if if in English uh, a, a concept like the stall, it's hard to understand, hard to process, and you know, you, you need to 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 experience it and you need to push through it a lot and and finally get it. I was reading all this information and watching all these videos, exchanging information with a lot of people in English, and at the same time I had to translate everything and uh, make it mash in my, in my, in my head on yeah. how things should work. So that was, that was kind of a double challenge for me. But at the same time, I was, I was up to it. I was completely hooked to it. You know, once you receive this barbecue call, you're on it. You're on it. So people might question too. They might not question or they might wonder, does, do most people in El Salvador speak English the way you like do they have the ability or did you because of your business your English because you're like it's I I would I would I would think you were raised here no I'm I'm still struggling I'm still developing I'm I'm gonna commit a lot of grammar errors on this interview believe me Uh, I'm just trying my best Um, not really no Um, I learn watching movies and reading and 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 talking to my wife she had access to to a fully bilingual education. Gotcha. So, you know, I had certain certain knowledge of, of the language, but there was still a huge language barrier there. In San Salvador, were you selling your food or giving it away to friends or were you, what were you doing? Uh, at the beginning, it was all about family and friends. You know, you 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 burn a lot of meat <laughs> yes. uh, in the early beginning. Not the only and, <laughs> Yes. And, and, and back in that time, it was only my family and friends like, Hey man, this this potentially could be good, you know. At some point, no, they were very supportive, and then family and friends. But then, my brother-in-law, he is a strategic designer for business, and he said, "Hey, let's create an Instagram page and let's put it out there, man. Let's see what happens." So he he uh, he created a platform like a catering company, and at that point, I was already getting either brisket choice or or prime. They call it premium over there. But you just have basically choice and, and, and prime. So expensive. Um, it's expensive now here, but 
you imagine, you know, yeah, the yeah. Uh, shipping, yeah, yeah. shipping uh, something from the United States to the to to San Salvador in an expedite way that was highly highly expensive, but something happened. Uh, we started receive receiving a lot of orders from U.S. expats, especially Texans ah. in San Salvador, because we happen to have the largest U.S. embassy in Central America. Once again, because of the war, you have buildings and buildings of embassy, U.S. embassy in San Salvador. Oh, that's interesting. So I don't know exactly who did that inside the U.S. embassy. I don't know what happened exactly, but we were all of a sudden delivering 40 pounds of brisket through this huge gated community and, you know, yep. armed guards and <laughs> exchanging documentation and what's your name, what's your phone number, you know, all these checkpoints. Hey, I just have a few ribs here for, you know, an individual here. I'm just, you know, trying to, to, to uh, deliver it in a, in a timely manner because this thing has a food safety control. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, it was a journey. It was a what? journey. How interesting wow. is that? <laughs> This yeah fascinating <laughs> wow it, so it, it was great, great you time. started to great. get like a little bit of a following in that sense yes yes uh definitely we we started receiving a lot of orders sometimes selling out and of course i was selling out three briskets but that was a major accomplishment for us probably five to ten ribs uh chicken we were even smoking rabbit uh whatever whatever we could find and 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 of course with growing Growing comes with growing pains. And uh, one day police knocked on my front door and they were like, hey, are you running a cafeteria or a restaurant business here? What's going on? We have complaints from the neighbors. Um, Just like America. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's uh, <laughs> you can't get yes, away from and, it. Yes, totally. Um, and I think I think that happened in, in the early days. And then we continue the business for a few more weeks but then my father-in-law came and he said hey i think you might have a good product here but we really need to move this smoker out from your backyard and he happened to have this spot at his farm acres of land and um he has this he had this pot in which they used to manufacture cheese oh so it was all approved it was all you know health department was not giving you a hard time on that. Uh, there was a place for the smoker. There was a place for the wood. Plenty of space. Uh, nobody will bother us. He he had that vision, really. He had that vision. And he is coming from the restaurant industry, too. He was born into it. <clears throat> so I think he was able to, to see something coming, you know, or maybe crazy enough to invest in our project. <laughs> but he, he, I think he uh, saw something, probably. He saw, probably. He, could, he, could, he could see that people were... were gravitating towards it exactly exactly and it was great we 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 started cooking at the farm and then i think everything picked up from there we were preparing sides uh, more like a commercial ghost kitchen kind of you know preparing sides uh, adding beer to it you know you have a lot of amazing craft beers in salvador uh, we were adding like trays or packages barbecue packages and people were trying and trying and and it was great. It was so, great. We're so people great, weren't great eating on property. They were taking food to go. Yes. Or... Everything was, was we were preparing everything at the farm and then we deliver. I got you. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What were you and, guys and called course, back then? 265. 265. 265. Yes. We always had this feeling of a constant low and slow temperature reminder, but in El Salvador due to the height, I was, I was, convinced that 250 or 225 at the low at the low and slow temperature was not enough i was going to 65 and that was like my to-go temperature gotcha over there interesting yeah. do, you do you still have photos from that those days do you have any photos? oh yes absolutely can you yes, send me I some of those love... yeah totally totally yeah. I, I think people it would be fun yeah. for people to see yeah totally i have plenty of those um and then the opportunity came to, to move to the U.S. because of um, my in-laws uh, business company. And my wife was transferred to the U.S. as a business with a business visa. Okay. And I was added to it. And, and we 
conducted like a market study in the area. And it turns out there was no Texas barbecue at the metropolitan DC area. And I just couldn't believe it. I think every city has to have a proper <laughs> Texas barbecue yeah. joint in the United States. And it was kind of the same feeling as in El Salvador, like people are missing out, you know, mm -hmm. they should try Texas barbecue. And of course you have a lot of barbecue joints in here and they're great, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's uh, your own approach to barbecue and what you feel like cooking every day. Mm -hmm. And I was already into Texas barbecue. So we decided not going to, not going with the option of the Salvadoran gastronomy flag restaurant, but going with the Texas barbecue style in the air. And this was in Maryland, right? Yes. So this is in Riverdale Park, Maryland. It's 10 minutes from DC. Um, it's very convenient. We are 15 minutes from our stand at Union Market. Everything happens in the same area. It's like Maryland suburbs. It's really close to DC. Um, we love this side of the community. It's very, very supportive and very, it's very open to the gastronomic diversity too, which is great. Did you, how did you find your location? Or was that a location that was a restaurant before? We had the help of the uh, Prince George's Economic Development Corporation. They kind of kind of guide us through the process and they were scouting properties in the whole metropolitan DC area with us. And then we saw this abandoned corner in Riverdale Park. And I think what really got me was the fact that it used to be a meat market. And, and as you know, that's kind of how Texas barbecue evolved. Of course, yeah. From selling raw meat into smoking meats to preserving meats before, you know, the highly commercial refrigeration processes that, we, that now we have. And um, I felt like this is like closing the circle um, for, for this little corner here in River the Park. And, you know, uh, my father-in-law said, this place has a lot of parking space and you will need this. And this place has a lot of uh, storage space. You have a huge basement. You have uh, an approved grease trap in the back. You have um, wow. uh, an extraction hood, you know, all those wow. um, uh, really hard to navigate permitting process were already there. So that really expedited everything. When did you guys get the lease? Was that in 2019? No, eight, nine? That was October, October 2019, 2019. October 2019. Yes. Uh, and then the pandemic hit. Um, but did you was, get, but at that time, had you purchased, you, because you have pr uh, primitive pits, right? Yes. Yes. I, at that point. So what happened was um, we, we acquired both the lease agreement for the corner. And on the side, there was a pizza shop. So we bought this the pizza shop mainly because of, what I mentioned about the permitting process, having you know the hood, having the grease strap, having everything permitted to operate. And then there was uh, right behind the pizza shop, there was another great location for a smokehouse where you connect two alleys and where you connect the garages where we store the wood. So I was already you know processing all that yeah, location. Yeah. And I think probably some of the civil engineering training paid off I maybe, don't know, probably. maybe yeah yeah a little bit <laughs> <laughs> finally paid off something uh and and i was i was kind of envisioning everything mm -hmm. it makes and, you look at things differently probably exactly exactly and and of course I, I i knew at that point um the basic setting of a texas barbecue restaurant mm -hmm. and and i kind of lay out that in my mind so we acquired the pizza shop and then uh, we added the first smoker, which was a 500 gallon smoker to the current pizza operation, which more, you know, it was, it was way easier to navigate. Um, I think Daniel Castillo can, can relate to this. You know, there's a lot of permitting process when so much. inspectors are not used to it. You know, I presented my site, my site plan to the health department to the permitting and licensing, to the Maryland Department of Environment, to all, to all of those government agencies. And I said, hey, uh, you approved a Metric 250 gallon smoker for a catering company down the block. So you cannot say no to me. You can't say no to me. <laughs> and they were like, okay. 
It's we know matter quick. Uh, it's a reverse flow, but you need to put it on a trailer. So we we bought this barbecue trailer, and it comes with the title. We were able to to um, add it to the existing kitchen equipment, and that was that was the takeoff. That seems like a process that a lot of people have done. It's the trailer route. I think that seems so. That's a good takeaway for someone that's listening or watching this. Yes, that yes, sort of, that's the way to go. Yeah, because the it, way just, it just seems yeah, it just seems like they understand. The main the main goal is the health department needs to understand what you're doing. It's like it's mm-hmm. it's so foreign to so many of them, and and also too like I think the turnover at health department. I used to deal in the cheese business, like, like you're talking about. I right. and so we dealt with the health department so much. It was out of supermarkets, and it was there's all these kind of nuances that you need to to do, and and it, it must be. So was your area it's now? But now you have what two one thousand or do you? Yes, yeah, so now we have a 1,000 gallon smoker from Primitive Pits, and we are adding another 1,000 gallon from Primitive Pits very, very okay, soon in the next few weeks. In the okay. next few weeks, so we're gonna have two 1,000 and one 500. And the 500 was was that from Primitive too? That's from Meadow Creek. Oh, that's, that's a Meadow Creek. Okay, that's a Meadow Creek. Yeah, yeah. However, I had to do a lot of a lot of modifications in the Meadow Creek though, because um, it's meant to cook with charcoal. So we, we, um, I worked with my local welder, creating more airflow, creating a round shape uh, firebox, enlarging the uh, smokestack, uh, lowering the baffle, a lot of different modifications to make it more Texas style. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, I, and then what's, I, I have that, this massive list of pit makers that I've been creating and Meadow Creek was one that somehow I overlooked and I've been talking to them because I'm adding them. I didn't realize, but do they make do they make ones now that are for wood or? Do, uh, mm, I, I don't think so. As far as I know, no. Okay. No, That's interesting. No. The, the 500 gallon is, is their largest version of a smoker. Okay. Then gotcha. everything goes down. Uh, they're great. I even I even went to Amish country, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and they were not very happy about my changes in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you know they've been building smokers for 30 years and you can see their craft you know their pride on what they yeah, do yeah, yeah. And, you know we have high respect for them of course but i was just doing another thing another type of a very specific that yeah, thing that you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that you wanted to so do. at that point they had my 50 percent deposit so they couldn't say no <laughs> yeah that helps to my right? changes <laughs> yes but you know it, it was a great experience exchanging all this knowledge with them and at, at the end um they said you know, it was challenging for us, but we understand where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you when you opened, so it was you said October 2019. We were at that point still still uh, doing pop ups at the pizza shop every Sunday. Okay. And we were at this at the at the same time working at the corner, which is you know right next door, and we were sharing the commercial kitchen in the back because that's how the building is designed. And we were working nonstop. I remember my brother working day at night, you know, um, making shelves, making, um, you know, all the plumbing, all the uh, electric uh, designing and, 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 and uh, updating the electric system, uh, um, <laughs> lighting. Yeah, he was, he was definitely a great support, um, not only designing, but also on the, you know, doing the, the actual upgrades at that corner. Cause the place, the whole place was abandoned for eight, eight, nine years. And it was full of junk up until the ceiling, you know, uh, the floor was in bad shape, a lot of different modifications. But at that point we had the vision of, of what could be. You know? And you, uh, you said you also had a basement. How was, how, what kind of shape was that in? Uh, terrible, terrible. Uh, yes, it, it kind of goes with the, the whole place. Yes, water, water leaking everywhere. Uh, it's a 1936 building. That's Northern neat. family. Had- it sounds so like the way you, you're describing right? it sounds like a movie almost. <laughs> like it just seems so neat too. Like it keeps saying pizza shop and be, it just sounds really cool. Like I, and I've seen photos, obviously I want to visit when I'm able to, but it's, it's, it sounds really cool. But building all this, were you getting inkling? Were you hearing about this? virus that that was starting to like in november not, not at all, not or, at all. or maybe january not at all um to be honest with you when we opened april 2020 rent was due and we had to open not 
not many, I mean, not much support from the landlord at that point, probably a few months, but we, everything was changing. You know, he was understanding, but he was still, you know, we were, we were negotiating what, what was, what was happening. I think as everybody else, Yeah. but um, we felt like, Hey, this is, this is our responsibility. We have a contract. We need to, to face it. And we could have probably waited for a few more months, but that was not an option at that point anymore. So you had all that location plus you had a, a 1000 too. Did you, had you received your 1000? No, oh, no, no okay, that was okay. in the making. That was okay. That making. Was, so at least yeah. you didn't have, but you guess you had put a deposit on that, but now, so now <laughs> how did you, so did you just shift to, to go only or. So how do you deal with that? Opened, like the, and what's your mindset? Are you freaking out? <laughs> That's Cause the world's freaking out uh, already. It's like a trauma in my head. I forgot so many details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate, uh, should I not bring this? Up? <laughs> no, no, no. I want um, you to be able to look at this ten years from now and go, okay, that's how I was feeling because you're forgetting exactly. it already. Yeah. No, we were doing pop ups at the pizza shop every every Sunday, and we were doing the local farmers market every Thursday, and we were we were busy. I mean, it's a twenty four hours process, so we were completely busy uh, Tuesday through Sunday doing the pop-up at the farmer's market. And then, and that was completely outdoors. So that was not affected. And uh, doing pop-ups on on Sundays at the pizza shop. When we opened next door, um, the whole remodeling, the whole remaking of the, of the place took six months. And then we received our permits. And we received our permits right during the lockdown. I remember having this last inspection right during the lockdown, um, it was good because the inspector didn't want to even to come in to the restaurant. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a sign. I'll give you an, a green light right now. I'm just, I'm just gonna go inside. And it was good. We were, we were good to go at that point. But we opened during the lockdown, and as you know, we designed the restaurant for a authentic Central Texas barbecue. Mm-hmm. Um, we even preserved the hooks where they used to hang the animals at the meat market at that corner. Really cool space. You have the line, you have the scales, you have you know meat by the pound. Uh, you wait everything, you dispatch, and everybody looks for a, for a, for a table. It's Texas style barbecue right there. But with the lockdown, we had to switch everything to takeout. And I remember the second weekend we opened, there was a guy, Team Ebner from either DC who came, I don't know what happened, but he came on, on, on the second weekend we opened. And then the next day he texted me and he said, I want to do a write off on your, on your, on your restaurant. Uh, I remember him just taking his bag and leaving. And I said, Hey, we just opened the restaurant and you, you opened today. And we said, we opened last week. And he was, you know, very uh, fascinated about the, about the whole story and, and I was opening during the lockdown. And uh, we started the change in communication right there. And then the following week, Tim, Tim Carmen from the Washington Post came to the farmer's market location where we were selling meats by the pan were vacuum sealed. And that was another great lesson from our journeys to from our trips to Texas because you know, when, whenever you go to, let's say Terry Black's barbecue and whatever they have left, you know, probably two ribs, one rib, mm-hmm. one single rack of ribs, half rack of ribs, uh, a full brisket, whatever, you know, they put it in a, in a separate uh, fridge mm-hmm. and you can get it frozen. So, no, it's so smart, so smart. Absolutely, absolutely smart. And the same, same thing with Franklin barbecue, they have this, um, Prior to the pandemic, they had this chill vacuum hole brisket mm-hmm. selling. And we said with my wife, hey, this is probably, you know, what, what we want to do during the lockdown. Everybody's like grab and go and preparing stuff at home. So we started selling um, meats by the pound, cuts by the half rack, full rack at the farmer's market, vacuum seal, chill. And that was it. And that's where Tim caught, yeah, because Tim, yeah, yeah, he's. Yes, no, he's, 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 he's great. And yeah. he came to the farmer's market. It was pouring rain. It was on a Thursday. Uh, I was at the register. I was, I didn't even know how to use the register at that point. My <laughs> wife was doing a lot of stuff in the back. And, you know, they're, they're very, 
respectful. You know, they're, they're not telling you, hey, I'm this person from this newspaper. You know, he was very respectful to it. A few days after that, he texted me and said, I would like to speak with you about this, you know, chill vacuum seal packages. And he, uh, by Memorial Day, he wrote an article about, you know, how the different barbecue joints in the area were changing and, 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 and processing things and presenting things different due to the, due to the pandemic. And um, that was a great, great help. You know, because that word of mouth publicity, it was out there in the Eater and it was out there in the, uh, the Washington Post. So that was a great, great push to it. Yeah, those are like the two that you'd want to, that, like you would pursue that on your own to get it. You would want them to come anyways. And, yes, yes. And, and, and so that's actually expect- perfect. Yeah, that's, and so were you yeah. selling a lot of vacuum sealed stuff at, after that? That helps. Yes, uh, up until the day. Today we sell, we still sell whole chickens, uh, chilled and vacuum sealed. We have a lot of people going to Western Maryland for camping. They just stop by the, the shop and they just, you know, they get this uh, vacuum well, sealed presentation and they just go yeah for camping on the weekend. That that kind of stay in the menu. Uh, we're still shipping a few briskets, vacuum sealed. You know, whenever we have some some leftovers, not happened that much. Then thanks God, but. Yeah, we're still, we're still doing it. And it's not leftover, like, so people can understand. It's not leftovers like it was on someone's no, tray no, no. or leftovers like it's it's just <laughs> you've you've cooked for the day, you've sold like 80% yes. or 90%, and then that that leftover amount becomes, yeah, it's fresh and it's just correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. I, I want because uh, people have questioned that in the past. And thank you. Not, yes, yeah. canceled orders. You know, you have this probably huge catering event, and then they said, hey, just, you know, I was I was expecting sixty people, and now I'm expecting forty. Can you please reduce the amount of pounds? And you know we're flexible with it. And that's that's kind of the. And uh, you need to you need to turn turn that you need to turn that into money because that's do business, and also yeah, you absolutely. want, and then it gives people an opportunity picking up something like that and reheating it. It's so good. It's so great. It's a perfect way to, yes, to enjoy yes, it. In your it home. comes with your instructions. Comes with barbecue sauce, pickles, and the whole part for now we on the side. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, and living in Los Angeles, I'm used to having stuff shipped here. Right. And right, that right, right. 99% of the time it comes perfect. And then there's a, yeah. we have these heat waves that ruin. And then UPS has a good job. They do a good job of ruining things sometimes, but <laughs> leaving yeah, something exactly. in their truck. But I it's like that. Yeah. Of- let's talk about your menu and let's talk about, we, we, we were discussing off air that things are starting to, you're seeing a little bit of a shift, sadly, of a little bit more to go business because of, the Delta variant or, or you know, what's, right. whatever the mindset of what people are thinking. But now can you, can you do, is there indoor dining now? Yes, there's okay. indoor diner. That has been available for, I think, four months now. Okay. Um, it started with a 25% and a 50%. Now it's full indoor capacity as of today. I don't know okay. what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, masks mandates are back in DC, um, which pretty much, you know, dictates in a lot of ways what's happening in the area too. Now we have a full indoor setting, and and another great thing about our location is we have we have ten outdoor tables, okay. picnic tables. So you have a lot of capacity outdoor too. That's perfect. That really helped during the pandemic. Yes. Then that'll mm-hmm. help if there's a little blip, and then it goes back. Um, it'll come back to indoor seating. Yes. But if things happen where it gets pushed to twenty five percent or something again. You'll have that. So, so you can dine outside. Let's talk about your menu. And and do you have anything on your menu? I was I was searching it like 10 mm-hmm. different times. Do you have anything from San Salvador? Do you or is it all central sex? There's was that one dessert type dish or a side that, that has your influences or something? Or is that oh like- that's just a very yeah. Menu is very interesting for me because uh I was speaking to Joe from from Joe from Minister, Ministers of Smoke and in Texas, you kind of know what to expect from a barbecue joint. You'll yeah. see, you know, the, the main core smoked meats, Texas style barbecue menu. Mm-hmm. And then everybody is doing their own thing on the side side of the menu. And you kind of know what to expect. You can even decide, decide uh, what to eat, what you prefer for that particular day with that particular um, crew, you know, whether you're sitting with family or friends. Um, you have Cole barbecue, you have Leroy and Lewis barbecue, you have 
so many different styles of barbecue and they're all great to yeah. end smokehouse but over here it was it's it's been hard for us to put a menu out there that is reflecting our hispanic heritage mm-hmm. and at the same time reflecting what texas barbecue is for us interesting and of course you have yeah and of course you have you know the salt and pepper oak wood core menu you know you have the brisket prime you have the american wagyu brisket you have ribs you have dry rubs you have um sausages you know the 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 core menu of the texas barbecue you have it there but on the sides we do a lot of our hispanic heritage influences into it uh you're gonna find tajin green beans you're gonna have you're gonna find chamoy watermelon you're gonna find um rice pudding arroz con leche you're gonna find um brisket beans you know they're not sweet pinto beans they're silky red kidney beans from central america and we add the wagyu trimmings to it Uh, yes on sundays you will find barbecue pupusas um you're gonna find a lot of different uh, that's flavors. great the yeah, guacamole yeah, the... pico de gallo yes can you explain the pupusa to people that might not know what that is because i didn't sure. grow up eating them I, a... I had to, i had to search them out and there's a there's a large uh el, Sal- el salvadorian community in los angeles but there's it's not totally. i think most people are used to just having like mexican food <laughs> that's just that's right, their right, right. their go-to i think so can you explain it, what a pupusa is sure sure it's like a like a like a stuffed tortilla it's made with corn like an arepa uh, it's stuffed with meat uh, we mix that up 100 percent corn and then we stuff it with our own three uh, cheeses mix and either brisket or pulled pork that has been smoked previously mm-hmm. and processed into a into a mix mm-hmm. and and we present that with the whole paraphernalia you have the salsa you have the pickled vegetables you have the spicy pickled vegetables. You have everything on the side too. So, it's it's like the collision of two cultures right there. Is it something that is it prevalent? Like, is it a, a grab and go snack that people eat a lot in San Salvador? Like, is it something that because it's so it's it's about that big, right? Am I? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it it can be anything you want in the Salvador. It can be a snack. It can be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Do they have breakfast ones with? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. totally. That, makes, that makes sense. Hot so, chocolate or a hot coffee and pupusas, that's kind of your perfect breakfast. Or <laughs> wow, that, yeah. sounds, that sounds really good. But that's only on Sundays <laughs> for you guys? Only on Sundays, yes. Okay. So we have specials every day. You have uh, barbecue sandwiches on Wednesday. We're up on Wednesday through Sunday. You have pastrami on on Thursdays. Uh, pastrami is something Max Chafari uh, from Texicana Barbecue ah. helps us a lot, yes. <laughs> On Fridays, you have brisket tacos, you have barbecue bowls. Uh, on Saturdays and through the weekends, you have a lot of um, poultry. You have chicken wings, you have chicken quarters, you have half chickens. And then on Sundays, you have uh, the barbecue pupusas. We have something different every day, mm-hmm. but you know, what we'll be discussing the menu, um, we wanted to do you know, our own fresh tropical um, menu version of it we always say we're te- central texas barbecue joint with a pinch of the tropics <laughs> i like that <laughs> i yeah. like that a lot do you, have a, <laughs> do, do you have any specific desserts that are from your heritage yeah so we have currently we have the rice pudding arroz con leche and we have the peach pudding or peach cobbler okay we 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 eat that a lot but it's more like a custard in in the salvador okay wasn't well, there like something isn't there, yeah isn't there something with pineapple or papaya or something or did i see it with what oh was... that's 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 a side. we consider that a side okay um you see when you yeah yeah no to... yeah but i was yeah. just wondering in general I think that's, I yes think caramelized that. pineapple yes that's great uh so you know what happens when you go to these brazilian steakhouses or a steakhouse in general and they're slicing cutting your meat in front of you and you're pinching that out i love, I love that <laughs> yeah yeah and they will all reserve they will all reserve uh caramelized pineapple at the end or roasted or fire up pineapple and it really helps with barbecue coma and it really helps with your digestion digestion really, yeah that's what i was gonna yeah. say I thought, yeah okay. yeah exactly and 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 it really helps with you know rinsing out your palate and and eating more eating more uh-huh. exactly some uh-huh. acidity some sweet sweetness to it a lot of people consider it side a lot of people consider it dessert um yeah it's really raw turbinated sugar um baked with cinnamon and raw honey and 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 mixed and and caramelized a little bit and it's served cold 
And I think if people go to the, you know, if, if, if they come to the restaurant with an open mind, mm-hmm. you know, trying Texas barbecue and having a lot of uh, Latin flavors in the sides, I think it's a very enjoy, you know, enjoyable experience. Well, it sounds like too, you have unique, yeah. because I've talked to so many different people and I, you know, you know about your name, you're name dropping so many places that I know of and that we all know of, but your sides are unique to even them. Like you, you have, a, you have a, an array of sides that I have not heard of before or that aren't necessarily on menus, which is great. I think that's, that's fabulous. I mean, that get, that's reason yes. alone to, to visit multiple times because there's so many times, so many different things to try. Totally, totally. And, and, and let's say right now, you know, you're eating at probably 80, 90 degrees outside. It's summer, it's hot and you have this great barbecue platter, but at the same time, it's hot and you have this cucumber salad, you have this beet salad in your plate. Yeah. We oh, yeah, that tray. beet salad, yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, you know, so so many fresh flavors to it. And I think people like you and 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 I, I would like to mention Prophets of the Smoked Meats, uh, Daniel Vaughn, his book really inspired us to do and to try something different because, you know, when you read his book and you realize there are so many different barbecue joints that are doing so many different things in Texas, you know, being a huge state as it is, but still you will find different variations and different approaches to barbecue, literally from one city to the other. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. And that really helped us, you know, opening our eyes and saying, this is, you know, what we want to do too. We want to reflect who we are into the menus, like inviting your family and friends to your house and, serving what you can cook and what you feel like for definitely are you open for lunch and dinner yes we open from noon to 8 p.m or until sold out (laughs) that's that's always the caveat (laughs) no it's just another topic yes that's 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 that has been a challenge too in the area yes i was gonna say i would imagine a challenge you're teaching yeah it's it's almost like i think with with most texas barbecue places or texas style barbecue they're teaching the customers as much as as they are serving great food because it's it is a challenge for people to understand that you can't sell that you can't sell like a burger you could just pop on but uh but but it's but is are they taking like does it seem other is there a lot of walk-up business is that is it a community because i'm imagining that there's people that live nearby right it's Yes, totally. I mean, the community has been extremely supportive during the pandemic. I think that's that's how we survived, to be honest with you. And and then what happened was November the 10th, there was an article from the Washington Post from Tim Carmen. He publishes every every year the list of the top 10 barbecue joints in in, in the metropolitan DC area. And I I I remember I was going to buy some briskets because the supplier failed to deliver that week. And I was on my way, you know, uh, uh, driving and, and loading a lot of stuff. And my wife called and she was crying. She was very excited. And she said, oh. we are the Taylor Swift of barbecue. <laughs> we're like, what is, what, 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 what's happening? She said, uh, we're number one. Wow. And, and uh, that's, what, that, that's, that's what Tim Carmen's wrote. He put... Uh, we have a new arrival to number one, the Taylor Swift of barbecue. And I think that it won't replicate that in Texas monthly too, in a little, in a little paragraph. Oh yeah. Okay. That's where I've yes. I remember seeing Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So going straight to number one on the billboard list as Taylor Swift. <laughs> that, no, that was always, the analogy. Yeah. That was the analogy. I was completely unaware of it because you know, I'm not particularly a fan, but. <laughs> but you do need but, to, of, she should visit now. I think this would be, she's a big fan of the show. She watches every episode of Good <laughs> I'm right. sure she has no idea. I'm sure no, she, yeah, I'm sure no, she has plenty of time to watch ra- randomly <laughs> YouTube things where I interview right. people. And, but but uh, that's that's a really great thing. That's that's really cool. And that's but that must also be did, what was the reaction then? So that was November of last year. Did November of last year? Yes. And then uh, we've been at the top 38 restaurant options to visit when you when you're in dc from eater or eater yeah and a, a lot of stuff from eater taste of the south washington and magazine uh washington city paper a lot of good reviews a lot of good stuff a lot of good people and i think you're putting your you heart know, into it. it yeah i mean it, it's something you really never expect but as Tut says barbecue 
keeps bring, bringing more people together, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and every time you start a fire, chances are you're going to have a lot of good people around you. Definitely. And, and, and it's a sense of sharing. It's a sense of caring of what you're doing. And, and I think people in the air are appreciating to answer your question specifically. They are appreciating the handcrafted style of barbecue we're doing here. You know, they, they, they visit our smokehouse. Um, I even have had inspectors come into the smokehouse like, hey, what do you plug these things? Where's the gas? Where's the electricity? <laughs> we're like, hey, that's the whole brain of the operation. That firebox <laughs> right there, that's all you need. And, and once they see the paperwork, oh, okay, so this is a barbecue trailer. Um, because of course has some modifications down the road. Uh, they're like, okay, I, I, I kind of know what you're doing. That's part of the challenge. And yeah, I think yeah. uh, Moose Craft Barbecue, um, Daniel Castillo Heritage Barbecue and some other guys, um, you know, they're, they're, they're pioneering, you know, to, towards that path. And I think it'd be a great inspiration for us to kind of doing the same thing you know, letting people know about what Texas barbecue is. We're kind of preaching the Texas barbecue gospel in here. Wow. Have you been out to Los Angeles yet? I've been to, yes. I've been to Heritage Barbecue and never been to Moosecraft Barbecue. Hoping to soon. They opened their new location. So yeah, excited yeah they, they just opened there like a month and a half ago. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful they spot. Will, the, the, day, the day we went to Heritage Barbecue, though, there were pretty much sold out that was you know towards the end of the day and we were able to get some some ribs and some sausages but still remarkable also a great guy uh Leroy Ivan Leroy I mean um uh, people who, who we admire and who we follow you know new school barbecue um I follow every single new patron video from Leroy and Lewis uh my Richard Farber we exchanging the communication via email and he's like Okay, for pastrami, do this and that, and oh, that's nice. Know, review this video and go to this Amazon list, and you know, uh, we were we were struggling with pastrami because we, we really wanted to put it out in the menu, and and really he really he really um, pushes through the last step to it, and I'm enjoying the pastrami very very much now. Wow, that's great, yeah. no, and that takes that takes a lot of work to to refine that and make proper totally, pastrami. Totally. Wow, that's. And, and, so great you, and and that's that's kind of how you know why we love barbecue so much because you have so many great people being supportive and sharing secrets sharing support we, we, we i don't think we could have ever make it without them wow. because you know they put yeah. in you know every 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 step of the way they put it out there even around even the roy speaking about barbecue economics it's something you should really look into, you know, uh, or JD Daniels from Primitive Pits, you know, he has this amazing information about whether you decide to open a catering barbecue or a restaurant barbecue or to what type of smoker do you need, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's not only business for him, you know, when you approach to him, he's like, what do you need? What are you looking for? And if you say, hey, I'm just, you know, trying to set up something that you can set and forget, he will probably hang up the call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because okay, well, he will, because he, he'll understand. Obviously, there's a, a different route that you need to go on. What's well, and, exactly. he, and he and he also too. He he's trying to figure out specifically what you need to help to assist you because he wants you to be successful. And that's and bottom well, line, yes. I, I know I know he wants you to buy a product, but he also he cares about the, these businesses that he deals with, and and you can tell, and he does beautiful work. All right, now what's the closest airport to where you are if people are flying in? Uh, Ronald Reagan. Dallas, uh, like how far? How far away is that? Or where? And um, where would like say someone was coming to visit? Where would they generally stay? Would they stay that to, to be kind of close by? But I, right, yeah. Would they come to DC? Is it, if someone was visiting DC, how long? Like for a family vacation or for something, and they wanted to screw it off and get and get your food. Right. Is it fit about 15, 20 minutes, or is it an hour, a half an hour away? Like with traffic, I don't know how things are there. Um, everything's pretty, pretty accessible here. I mean, being the capital or being so close to the capital, we're now in Union Market in D.C. Union Market is uh, one of the top 10 full hall destinations in the country. Looks beautiful. Um, yeah. Although it's, it's a very condensed menu over there because we cook and we dispatch and we serve fresh every single day. And we just have two sandwiches, two meats by the pound and two trays. 
um, not, you know, the 10,000 options you would find at the restaurant, but um, still a great location, lots of foot traffic, lots of tourism. Um, and then so it's also a great way for us to, to keep um, letting people know about Texas barbecue, what Texas barbecue style means to us. But in general, if you're visiting DC, um, you have a lot of um, uh, different accommodation options, plenty of them. Um, Tons, take yeah. advantage to, you know, to go to the landmarks, to go to uh, the beautiful museums, 100% free. I know now during COVID, you need to, you know, schedule things uh, with plenty of time and events. But as Joe from Ministers of Smoke, he was, he was traveling with his family and he was, you know, visiting all these landmark places, all these beautiful museums. And he took a 15 minutes ride to our location. Okay. It's really, so it's like, really yeah. close. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, we have the University of Maryland, which attracts a lot of people too, and they have a lot of uh, a lot of accommodations for students too. Um, it's such a great location, uh, such a great, wonderful community. We have inside the restaurant local photographers. Um, I have a few things from Texas photographers. Uh, I have White McSpada, for example, photo photographs. Um, I have Louis Mueller. I have. Um, Helen Turner from Tennessee oh, nice. doing his doing her thing. Yes, uh, a lot of Texas motives and a lot of uh, you know paying a lot of respect to to all the legendary pit masters. So of course, I have Tootsie. I have my cap collection um, hanging from the from the tin ceiling. You have La Barbecue, Valentina's Tex Mex. You have Heritage <laughs> Barbecue. Yeah, I mean we're we're it's it's a community. It's a community. We have local photographers, local artists. We have a local mural. It's we're creating kind of like like an Austin laid laid down back uh, laid laid back uh, scenario or feeling. Yeah. You know, so it's you so go there and enjoy the picnic. And that's why I wanted to talk to you because you mentioned yeah. all these people and there's all these people that visit DC or they visit that area and I want them to come visit you and I want Daniel to Thank come you. visit you. Too. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's. I, I, from afar, I've, I've marveled at what you've done, especially during the pandemic. And I, I've seen the, the, the pictures of your food or, and the passion that you, so I, I really want people, that's why I wanted to share the story. And I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that after they've heard this, that you're on their list to visit because it, seem, it seems like, and, and the people in your area, they're very lucky to have you. I think that it's a, what a treat to have you. And it's, just, and especially too, because of your specials and the changes and things they can, like I said, visit multiple times. I'm, I'm really happy. Is there anything we missed? What's your website and what's all the best ways to get a hold of you? 250bbq.com. That's a two and then the word 50. Exactly. Number two, then the word 50, uh, 250bbq.com. You'll find pretty much everything you need right there. Instagram. Some people are saying Instagram is dying because I need to upload a lot of videos with us and all that stuff. I think you're pioneering that because you're putting out their videos that we can all enjoy. Um, that's another subject. Instagram, uh, 250 Texas Barbecue. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, TikTok. Um, <laughs> I'm not really into that that much, but my brother-in-law, he is an expert on that. He is... <laughs> He is the man. He he has been a great support putting putting the word and the pictures out there. Everyone keeps telling me I should do, I should do TikTok. <laughs> it's, a, like, it's a small yeah. family run business here, you know. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like um, that's great. Then that's yes. that, that's even more of a reason to support because it's yes. not. Uh, yeah, you're not a totally. Chain, I just you know? cook, man. I just cook, and I have a tremendous, passionate pit crew that is that is out there for me every day. But the real brain of of the whole operation is my wife, Debbie. She's, you know, um, like the whole brain of the operation, you know, every single change, especially during the pandemic, how to implement things, how to do things better. Um, what type of system do, you, do we need? Um, she's the real brain behind everything. I forget, can people pre-order? You can pre-order, you can pre-order a day ahead. You can order the same day, you can call in, you can walk in too. We have a lot of, a lot of things for, for walk-ins. That's as of, as of today. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but <laughs> we know as of today, you have plenty of options. Yes, yes. Okay. And Excellent. special recognition to CCQ in Richmond, Virginia, too. Uh, Chris and Alex have been sending a lot of great people to our location, too. Uh, they've been sharing a lot of a lot of customers with us. When I, when I say share customers, like, I used to go to Richmond a 
lot. Now, when I won barbecue, I traveled to Richmond, Virginia to CCQ. Yeah, CCQ. Yeah. Amazing, amazing people. Yeah, Chris uh, and Alex. Great right? food. Just such, they're like, Chris and Alex, uh, like, I feel like they're like my cousins. They're so nice. They've always been so yes. nice to me. They're... No, amazing, amazing, great people. Um, a lot of inspiration from them, too. And they've been sending a lot of people on our, on our way. How far away and, and how far away are they from you? Um, almost, uh, I would say an hour and an hour and forty five. Okay, because I know that people would. 45. That's another location that people would want to visit in that area. Yes, and you yes, two would totally. be a, that would be a great if you hit yes. both those places. And that's not to, and the drive mm-hmm. would be an interesting drive. It would be different than driving in Texas or Arizona or California. Right. right? Yeah, right. you it's see different trip. sites, it's right? A trip. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. And 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 you're taking advantage of the trip to 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 get really hunger and to enjoy that. Yeah, part. exactly. Yeah, you eat at your yeah. place and then you're or vice versa. <laughs> like, right. You could, actually you could have yeah you could have them minutes. yeah you could have them and then come see you because you're open later yeah, yeah. or vice versa. Exactly. 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 <laughs> Excellent. Well, no, they, they 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 were a great inspiration on the sites too because they're doing their own thing on the sites too. They have a culinary expert in the kitchen and 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 you know um, they sit in their small house and realizing to. We need more cooking capacity. We need that direct flow. We need to develop that part and those kind of ways. All those things that I processed when I was there and Chris mentioned to me, I was able to transfer um, with my conversation with J.D. Daniels when it was the time for us to make our own um, first 1,000 gallon. Uh-huh. You know, J.D. Will, will, will ask you, what do you need? You know, and I, I kind of knew exactly what I need because of that traveling with with CCQ, you know, all those custom made details that he mentioned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And those guys, they're great business people too. They're smart. They're just, Oh yes. Uh, yes, yes. It broke they're my heart. Like knowing that it broke my heart during the pandemic, knowing how they had to just pair their business down so much. And then yes. thankfully, yeah. yeah, thankfully they survived it too. It's just such a, and their location looks so beautiful. And it's, just, it's great. Well, it's they're architects too. It's like you have a right. civil engineer degree. They're architects. It's just funny. Yeah. Daniel Vaughn's an architect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it all, it's, it's all full circle well thank you so much for taking the time i really 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 appreciate this and i think that people will have have gotten to know you a little bit more and then you know and you're there every day pretty much so it's a good chance to see yeah. you yeah not on a monday though i'm working from home on monday okay <laughs> like today no, thank you for the interview yeah thank, thank you, so, you much. so much